Hello students, today I will tell you about the temporal bone. We will discuss this bone into the two lectures. So in today's session, I will tell you about the gross features of the temporal bone, how to identify the side of this bone, what are the different parts of the bone, clear? So let's see about the normal features of this bone. So whenever you will have the temporal bone, my dear students, you have to keep this thing in mind that this bone is seen on the side of temporal bone. And you can also visualize this bone through the base of the skull. That means when you will have the norma basalis, you will find a projection is facing medially and that is visible from the base. Now when you will have the norma lateralis, now this is the norma lateralis. In the norma lateralis, lateralis, you will have a temporal fossa. In the temporal fossa, you will find the sutural lines and where you can demarcate this temporal bone, clear? The another important thing is that this bone is made up of four parts. Now this is the most important question. Whenever you are having this bone in your hand, you should know the four parts of the temporal bone. A squamous part, patromastoid part, tympanic part, and a styloid process. Now I will explain the squamous part in this part one of the temporal bone. The remaining three part we will discuss in the part two. The another important thing is that first you will have the gross idea about the presence of these four part because that is helpful in the side determination of this bone. So in this video clip, we will try to identify the four parts of the temporal bone. So this area which is visible here is your mastoid part. So here you can see that this is a patromastoid. It is not a mastoid only. It is having the petrous part also. Now when you will see this bone, the petrous part is not visible in the lateral view. The petrous part is projecting medially and also you are able to see the inferior surface of petrous part in the norma basalis. So when you will have the bone, you will find that there is a mastoid part and this mastoid part is continue with this part and this is the petrous part. So these two part, the petrous part medially and this mastoid part posteriorly jointly known as petromastoid part of temporal bone. Now this is the squamous part of the temporal bone, this plate like projection. Now here you can see that this green color this green color plate is your tympanic plate and this projection is your styloid process. So whenever you are having the parts, you have to understand that there is a tympanic part. This is the petrous part which is projecting medially, is continued with the mastoid part and that's why they are jointly known as petromastoid part. So I told you that there are four parts, squamous part, so squamous part is a flat plate-like area. Now this is a squamous part. Then you will have patromastoid part. Now out of these, the mastoid portion is visible in the norma lateralis, while the petrous part is visible either in the norma basalis or you have to go inside the cranial cavity. Tympanic part, I have shown you the tympanic plate which is forming the posterior part of mandibular fossa and the styloid process which is a projection and this projection is visible here is a styloid process. So these are the four different parts of this bone. So now once you will have the idea you can now do the side determination. So when you are doing the side determination this squamous part which is a plate like part you have to hold it upward and laterally. So this plate is laterally and it is facing in upward direction. Now this is a norma basalis. Now in this norma basalis you can appreciate this area. Now this projection is petrous part and you are able to see the inferior surface of the petrous part in the norma basalis. So when you are having the temporal bone you have to keep this squamous part in the direction is upward and lateral. You will have a strong zygomatic process. Now my dear students the zygomatic process always faces forward. Now here this is the zygomatic process it is faces forward and this zygomatic process is going to make a joint with this part of the zygomatic bone and in this way you are going to form a complete process which is known as zygoma. It is known as zygoma. Then you will have the petrous part, 
the petrous part is a triangular area. Now this is a triangular area and this triangular area is directed medially. Then you will have external acoustic meatus. We know that external acoustic meatus present on the lateral side of your bone. And this external acoustic meatus enclosed between the squamous and tympanic parts. Now, when you will have the right and left temporal bone, again you have to appreciate these points for the side determination. Now here you can see that this is your squamous part which is directed upward. This is your petrous part which is triangular and it is directed medially. This is the styloid process directed downward. Now here you can see that this is the tympanic plate is visible because it is a mandibular fossa on the inferior surface. So this is a tympanic plate here. Now this is the mastoid process which is present on the posterior part of the bone. So my dear students, if you will see all these features, what you will find that it is very easy to identify the site of uh, temporal bone. So for the site of temporal bone, you have to keep this thing in mind that right and left temporal bones are having the same feature but only difference is how to hold with the different parts. Now here you can see zygomatic process is facing forward. Now in this area the zygomatic process is forward in this direction. So you can see from the superior view this is the petrous part of both the temporal bones which is facing medially. This is the inferior surface of both the bone where you can see this is the mandibular fossa. Posteriorly, this is the tympanic plate, external acoustic meatus, styloid process and the most important thing that this is a flat plate like squamous area facing upward. Clear? So now it is easy to identify right and left temporal bone. Now when you will have the temporal bone, this thing should be very clear that what is the position of the bone in the cranial cavity. So for that we first remove the cap. So you have removed the right and left parietal bones. Now once you will remove the parietal bones, now you can appreciate this part of the temporal bone is visible. Now you know that this is your posterior cranial fossa and this petrous part, the posterior margin is forming the anterior boundary of posterior cranial fossa. So once you will remove the cap, you have removed both the parietal and frontal bone. Now you can see the position of the temporal bones inside the cranial cavity. So majority of the part of this bone is forming the floor of middle cranial fossa and this posterior border of the petrous part of temporal bone forming the line of demarcation between the posterior cranial fossa and middle cranial fossa. Clear? So my dear students, this is your triangular part which is known as petrous part of temporal bone and you can see it is present in the floor of middle cranial fossa. Now first we will discuss about squamous part of temporal bone. Now when you will have the squamous part you will have the two surfaces of the squamous part and two borders of the squamous part. Now what are the two surfaces? One is the outer surface. Now this outer surface is visible in the normal lateralis and another is the inner surface which is visible in the cranial cavity. That's why this inner surface is known as cerebral surface because it come in contact with the cerebrum that is temporal lobe. And this outer surface is going to form the uh, floor of temporal fossa. There are two borders, superior border and entero inferior border. So let's discuss the surfaces and borders one by one. So again, today we are discussing only the squamous part. So you are seeing the squamous part surfaces and borders only. So when you will see the inner side of the squamous part, you can see that this part is not smooth. Here you will have a multiple depressions for the cerebral cortex. Now here you can see that this is your anterior border and this is your superior border. Now this borders are going to make suture joint with the adjacent bones of skull. So my dear students, when you will have this type of the border, you will find that this border is not on the margin. You can see that it is a broad area and the suture is going deep into this border, clear? 
it is not a just a border, just a line. It is actually an area. And the suture area is little bit broader. Why it is broader? Because there is an overlapping is seen when you will have the dry skull in your hand. And that's why these overlapping is known as squamous variety of the sutures. So that you will find in the dry skull that the superior margin of the squamous part make squamous variety of suture where you will have a overlapping because the another bone will come here. So this portion is overlapping. Clear? There is no end to end suture. It is a overlapping of the adjacent bones. So my dear students, here you can see that this is your squamous part of the temporal bone. And in this squamous part of the temporal bone, you can see that this is your sphenoid which is making a joint here. And this is the parietal bone which is making a joint here. We are not talking about this area because this is a mastoid part. And in this lecture, we are only discussing this squamous part of temporal bone. So what are the features seen on the outer surface of the squamous part of temporal bone? The first and most important thing is that when you will see this temporal bone, this outer surface is known as temporal fossa. And you know that this temporal fossa gives origin to the temporalis muscle. So here in this video clip, you can see that there is a presence of temporalis muscle origin. Now here what you are able to appreciate that this is your temporal fossa and in this temporal fossa you can see this is a temporal fascia and deep to the temporal fascia you can see there is a presence of temporalis muscle. So if you will remove this temporal fascia you can very well appreciate deeply placed temporalis muscle and when you will remove this muscle you will find there is a presence of the temporal bone. So the outer surface of the temporal bone is a part of temporal fossa. Clear? So dear students, this is a one and very important concept about the outer surface that outer surface of the bone give origin to the temporalis muscle. There is a one important thing that above the external acoustic meatus, you will have a groove on the outer surface which is for the middle temporal artery. Now here you have to first understand what do you mean by the middle temporal artery. We know that the external carotid divide its terminal branches. Here you can see that there are two terminal branches of the external carotid. One is known as maxillary artery. Another is known as temporal artery. So this is your superficial temporal artery which is a terminal branch. And this is maxillary artery which is arising deep to the neck of mandible. Now this superficial temporal is giving a branch which is known as middle temporal artery. While the maxillary artery is giving a branch which is known as deep temporal artery. So there are three temporal you are able to see. This is your superficial temporal artery. This is your middle temporal artery. And this is your deep temporal temporal artery. Now what you are able to understand that it is a superficial that means this branch is not going deep. Deep means this superficial is not pierces the temporal fascia and this middle temporal and the deep temporal both pierces the temporal fascia and they will pierce goes deep and they will anastomose on the outer surface of temporal bone. And this middle temporal artery creates a depression on the outer surface of the petrous part of temporal bone. So the middle temporal artery is a branch of superficial temporal and it pierces the temporal fascia. Now that's why this artery become deep and once it will become deep, it runs on the outer surface of squamous part in a groove for middle temporal artery. Then the next point is that its posterior part present supramastoid crest. Now my dear student, this is a very commonly asked question. It is a very uh, favorite question for your exam. Where is the supramastoid crest? So when you will see this image here, you can appreciate that this is your temporal bone of the left side. 
This is the zygomatic process facing forward. This is the squamous part is upward, mastoid process downward. Now once you will have this anatomical position, if you will trace the upper border of the zygomatic arch posteriorly, you will find there is a elevation is present. Now this elevation particularly, this area is known as supramastoid. Supra means above. Mastoid, this is the mastoid process. So above the mastoid process, you will find a projection. And this elevated area or the projection is known as supramastoid crest. So supramastoid crest is a very important feature of lateral aspect of temporal bone. Now below the anterior end of supramastoid crest and posterior superior to external acoustic meatus, you will find a triangle and that triangle is known as supramatal triangle. Now here we will try to understand the supramatal triangle. Now this is your supramastoid crest. Now when you will see the supramastoid crest, how to identify in a dry skull? The only thing is you have to trace upper border of zygomatic arch. And when you will trace the upper border of zygomatic arch, automatically you will find a elevation that is supramastoid crest. Now, postero superior to external acoustic meatus. This is external acoustic meatus. Now, behind and superior aspect, that means in this area. So, postero superior to this external acoustic meatus, you will have a triangular area. Now, this triangular area is known as supramatal crest and it is also having another name, McEwan's triangle. Now, this supramatal triangle is a very important feature because mastoid antrum lies deep to this area. So whenever there is an infection occurs in the mastoid air cells, this point is used to drill. So my dear student, what are the boundaries of supramatal triangle? Answer is supramastoid crest. Then you will have this boundary. Now this antero inferior boundary is formed by the posterior margin of external acoustic meatus and then there is a masonry line which is joining these two boundaries. Clear? So, whenever you are having the supramastoid crest, supramatal triangle is always there in your exam. What are the other features you will have on the lateral surface is zygomatic process. Now, you know that zygomatic process is a forward projection. Now, you can see here. Now, this zygomatic process is having anterior end and this anterior end, now this free anterior end is going to articulate with the zygomatic bone and it is going to complete your arch and that arch is now known as zygoma. So zygoma is a, another name given to the zygomatic arch and zygomatic arch is formed by two bones. One is zygomatic process of temporal bone and the temporal process of zygomatic bone. Now anterior part of the zygomatic process has two surfaces lateral and medial. Now my dear students, you can appreciate this is the lateral surface because it is visible from the lateral side. But on the inner side, here you will have the inner surface. So it is having the outer surface and the inner surface. Then it is having the two borders. This is the upper border and this is the lower border of zygomatic process. So there are two surfaces of the anterior part and two borders of this part. Now this is the important thing to understand that the masseter muscle arises from its two part, medial surface and inferior border, clear? That means this inferior border is also give origin to the fibers of masseter and its inner surface will also give the origin to masseter. So there are four things to understand. This is superior border, this is inferior border, this is lateral surface and this is medial surface of zygomatic process. But its inferior surface, inferior border and inner surface are only involved in the attachment of masseter muscle. Then you will have the temporal fascia. Now temporal fascia which is coming from above will reach up to the upper border of zygomatic arch. So its temporal fascia attached to the upper or superior border of the arch and its lateral surface is subcutaneous. So this part you can feel here which is subcutaneous in nature. Then the zygomatic process is having the posterior part 
Now, when you will have the posterior part, we are actually talking about this part of the zygomatic process. So, so we have divided the zygomatic process in the two area. This is the anterior part of the zygomatic process, where I told you the origin of masseter and attachment of temporal fascia. Now, in this posterior part of the zygomatic process, you will have the term articular tubercle and anterior and posterior root of zygomatic arch. So, the posterior part is triangular and it is having the superior and inferior surfaces. Now, try to understand that this part is having superior and inferior border, but this part is having superior and inferior surface. That means, this border will become broad in posterior aspect, clear? So, when you are, have, you are tracing a border and as soon as you will go posteriorly, that will become a surface. So, anteriorly you will have a border and posteriorly it will become surface. So, this is border anteriorly and it becomes surface posteriorly. In the same way you will have inferior border anteriorly become inferior surface posteriorly. Now, the inferior surface of the posterior part of the zygomatic process is bounded by two roots. Now, when you will have this inferior surface. Now, my dear student, this inferior surface is comes in the roof of mandibular fossa. And when you will see this area, on the inferior side, we always use the word anterior root and posterior root. So, whenever you are using the term anterior posterior root, you are basically talking about the inferior surface of the posterior part of zygomatic arch. So, both the root convert at one point that is known as tubercle that is known as tubercle of the root of zygoma or it is also known as articular tubercle of the your mandibular fossa. Now, the lateral ligament of TM joint attached on it. So, this is your tubercle and on this tubercle you will find that there is a attachment of your lateral ligament of temporomandibular joint. The anterior root extend medially. That means, from this point, the root will go on inner side and that root is basically running along with the articular tubercle and it lies in front of the mandibular fossa. The posterior root begins above the external acoustic meatus. So, posterior root is present in relation to this external acoustic meatus. So, for the better understanding of these two roots, you have to look for the overall view of the temporal bone. So, let us see in this video clip. So, first when you will see the inferior surface of the temporal bone, you will find that this inferior border is now become broad and this area is known as inferior surface. Now, in this inferior surface, this is your anterior root. This is anterior root and the another important thing is where is the posterior root? So, this is your posterior root, clear? So, my dear students, it is very important to understand that anterior root is visible on the inferior side which is going medially, which is going medially from this articular tubercle and this area is known as articular eminence. So, this part is articular eminence and this part is articular tubercle. So, whenever you are having the zygomatic process, the zygomatic process is having the two part anterior part and posterior part and I have just shown you that this anterior part which is having inferior border converted into the surface. It become broad as you will go posteriorly and that posterior broad part is come in the anterior aspect of mandibular fossa. So, you have to understand that anterior aspect of mandibular fossa is contributed by a squamous part of temporal bone because we are discussing the zygomatic process which is a part of a squamous part of temporal bone. So, when you will see the mandibular fossa, it lies behind your articular tubercle. So, I have just shown you that this is your articular tubercle and behind that you will have a depression is known as mandibular fossa. Now, it consists of anterior part which is articular in nature and I just told you that this part is a part of a squamous temporal bone. So, the anterior articular part is formed by a squamous part of the temporal bone and there is a posterior non-articular part. 
Now this posterior non-articular part of the mandibular fossa is formed by the tympanic plate. Now my dear students, this is a very very important concept because whenever you will read the TM joint, temporomandibular joint in detail, it is always asked in your exam that mandibular fossa is not completely taking part in the formation of TM joint because the mandibular fossa is divided into the anterior, articular and posterior, non-articular part that we will discuss in the coming video clip of this lecture. So articular part related with the superior part of the articular disc and non-articular part related with the parotid gland. So here I already told you this image that this is the area where you will have the attachment of temporal fascia on the lateral surface of the temporal bone which will give rise to the temporalis muscle. Now <coughs> we'll have a fissure. Now what is this squamotympanic fissure? Now see, you have to understand that the floor of mandibular fossa, I told you divided into it, into the two part. This part is articular in nature and this part is non-articular in nature, clear? I just told you that the mandibular fossa is having two part, articular part. So suppose this is the articular part, you are seeing the fossa from inferior and this dotted area I am representing the non-articular part. The second thing which you learn just now that this part which is articular contributed by squamous part of temporal bone and this part is formed by your tympanic plate. Clear? Now my dear student, there is a line of demarcation between the articular and non-articular part. This line of demarcation is known as squamotympanic fissure, squamotympanic fissure. Clear? So whenever you are trying to look for squamotympanic fissure in the skull, where you have to look for? Answer is in the mandibular fossa. So when you will see the norma basalis and when you will see this norma basalis, this is your mandibular fossa. In mandibular fossa, you will find a line. Now this line is squamotympanic fissure. Now behind this line, you will have a plate. Now this plate is your tympanic plate and anterior to this fissure, this whole part we know that is squamous part of temporal bone. So this line named with the help of these two areas is squamotympanic fissure. Clear? Now you will realize that this tympanic part is forming the antero-inferior part of this external acoustic meatus. So this is the external acoustic meatus and anterior wall of the external acoustic meatus formed by this plate and this plate is known as tympanic plate. So dear students, this squamotympanic fissure is a very important landmark in the mandibular fossa because this fissure divides this fossa into the articular and non-articular parts. So it is situated in the mandibular fossa. It marks the junction of squamous and tympanic part of the temporal bone or you can say it marks the junction of articular and non-articular part of the temporal bone. Now this is again a very another further important concept that this fissure medial part. Now here you can see the whole length. Now this is the whole length of your fissure from this point to this point. Now here what you will find that we can divide this fissure into the lateral area and medial area. Now this medial part of the fissure is having a this projection which you can see here. Now this projection is dividing this fissure again into the two part. So try to understand this concept here that you are having the two bones. One is known as squamous part of the temporal bone and another is tympanic plate. So this is your squamous part of temporal bone. Suppose this is your squamous part of temporal bone. Now here is the tympanic plate. So this is the whole your fossa. Now this fossa is having the articular area anteriorly and non-articular area posteriorly and this gap is known as squamotympanic fissure. Now what is happening 
there is a projection is coming from above. Now this projection will enter into this squamo tympanic fissure. Now this projection is known as tagman tympani. What is this projecting plate is known as tagman tympani. So now what are the name given to this? So this tagman tympani is actually part of petrous bone. This is squamous bone and this is tympanic plate. Try to understand this concept. First, there was a fissure and this fissure was between the squamous and tympanic. So it is known as squamo tympanic fissure. Now when you will go medially, you will find that between the squamous and tympanic fissure, we are having one more very small projection which is present here. Now this projection is a downward projection of petrous bone which is known as tagman tympani part of petrous bone. So this fissure is now divided into the two part, anterior part and posterior part. Now this anterior part is known as petrosquamous and this posterior part is known as petrotympanic. Clear? So this squamotympanic is again further divided into the two part. What are these two part? Petrosquamous and petrotympanic fissure. So what is the basic concept? That there is a gap is present. Now this gap is between the squamous bone and tympanic part. So it is known as squamotympanic fissure. But now there is a one more bone comes. This is the part of petrous bone. So now this fissure is divided into the two part, this area and this area. Now this anterior part, now this part is known as, this is squamous, this is petrous. So this is known as petrosquamous and this is known as petrotympanic fissure. So this is why important because of these three structure. Now this is again the question that there are three structure which passes through the petrotympanic. Petrotympanic means the posterior part of this area. This is petrotympanic. So through this petrotympanic, you will have three structures coming out. One is corda tympanic now, which is a branch of facial now, anterior tympanic artery and anterior ligament of malleus. This is a very, very important question that name the structure passes through the petrotympanic fissure. So here we'll see first these fissures again. We'll try to understand this is the norma basalis where you can see that this is the mandibular fossa. This fossa is divided into the two part. This is the posterior tympanic plate. Tympanic plate is a part of your uh, anterior wall of external acoustic meatus. Now this is the inner view of the petrous bone. Now from the petrous bone you are having a small projection which is coming downward. Now this small projection which is coming downward from the petrous part of temporal bone is known as tagman tympani. So this is a tagman tympani. Now in front of the tagman tympani, this is the petrous part of, uh, squamous part of the temporal bone and behind the tagman tympani, this is a tympanic part of temporal bone. So this is the tympanic plate which you are able to understand here and this is a squamous part of your temporal bone. So this fissure here on the lateral side is known as squamotympanic fissure. But in this med medially, now medially what is happening because of this one more bony plate which is dividing this fissure further into the two part, there is a one more slit anteriorly and one slit posteriorly. And this tagment tympani is a part of petrous bone. So this fissure is known as petrosquamous fissure and this slit is known as petrotympanic fissure. I hope it is more clear to you that when you will see the mandibular fossa, in the norma basalis, this mandibular fossa will show a line. This line is known as squamotympanic fissure. Anterior to the squamotympanic fissure, you will have articular part of the fossa. Behind this fissure, you will have non-articular part of fossa. This non-articular part of fossa is formed by tympanic plate. And medially, this fissure further divided into the two part by a tagman tympani, which is a projection from petrous part of temporal bone.
Now, <coughs> now, so now I will show you the exit of corda tympani through the fissure. So here you can see that this is your TM joint. So you have to remove the mandible. Once you will remove the mandible, now you can see the mandibular fossa. Now in the mandibular fossa, you can appreciate this line which is known as a squamotympanic fissure. And medially, you know that there is a presence of the division petrotympanic and petrosquamous. Now here, you can see the exit of the nerve. Now this is your exit of corda tympani nerve. So this is the question for your exam that how the corda tympani come out from the middle ear cavity. So when it will exit the middle ear, it will come out through the medial end. You can see it is most medially in this line. So it will come out through the medial end of this fissure. So my dear students, this line is a very important landmark because it divides the joint cavity into the articular and non-articular part. And this line medially having the three structure, corda tympani, anterior tympanic artery, and anterior ligament of malleus. Then we'll talk about inner surface of temporal bone. Now inner surface of temporal bone is known as cerebral surface because this surface come in contact with the sulci gyri of temporal lobe. So this is the one question which lobe comes in contact with the inner side of temporal bone, answer is temporal lobe. And the most important thing is that on the inner side, you will find the groove and these groove are produced by middle meningeal vessels. So in this image, you can see the inner aspect of your temporal bone. So what we did in this image, that we have removed this right side of the skull. So half of the right side has been removed. So you can see the inner side of the left of your uh, uh, skull. Now in this, you can see that this is the impressions of your vein, middle meningeal vein. And this vein is creating the impression on the inner side of temporal bone. Clear? Now in this video clip, you can appreciate the relation of the temporal bone. So this is your temporal bone. Now so when you will remove this bone, you can find there is a presence of the vein inside and you will find there is a presence of your cerebral cortex. Clear? Now which part of cerebral cortex is this? It is a temporal lobe. Clear? And you can see that this is the foramen spinosum. And through the foramen spinosum, you can see the relation of the middle meningeal vessels. And these vessels create impression on the inner side of this area of temporal bone also. Now we'll talk about the borders of the squamous part. The borders are two, superior border, antero inferior border. So this is your uh, lateral view of the skull. So where is the superior border? So this is the superior border. Where is the antero inferior border? This is the antero inferior border of your uh, temporal bone. Now this superior border is going to make a joint with the parietal bone and this suture is known as a squamous suture. While antero inferior border is going to make a joint with the greater wing of the sphenoid which is here and this suture is known as sphenosquamous suture. So you know that the sutures are of the fibrous variety of the joint. But what is the characteristic of this suture? I just told you that they are not end-to-end -end suture. There is an overlapping is seen. So this is a characteristic thing is that when you will see the squamous suture in the dry uh, skull, you will find overlapping is there. So my dear students, at the end of this session of temporal bone, what we understood? We understood that how to do the side determination of the temporal bone. What are the different parts of the temporal bone? And I told you about the squamous part where the most important thing is that how the mandibular fossa are divided into the articular and non-articular part and what is the importance of the squamotympanic fissure which is seen into the mandibular fossa. So this is all for the session. Thank you.